you know, I want to continue to enjoy my life because I've got a hot missus, but, you know, at the end of the day, just because you've got a Ferrari doesn't mean you're allowed to drive it every day. <laughs> you've got to park it in your garage well for a while. Well said. Well said. <laughs> Welcome to today's podcast. I'm your host, Ron Burgundy, and today's guest is the legendary Mark Orville, or on the internet, he's known as Angry Dad. Mark's story is super interesting. He was an up-and-coming Aussie Rules football star, and he played seven games for Collingwood until a very unfortunate injury ended his career abruptly. His sporting dreams were absolutely shattered, and it catapulted him into about 25 years of depression. By the end of this podcast, like me, you're going to be able to appreciate that Mark's not only a stand-up bloke, he also also has this massive heart of gold mixed in with life experience that we can all learn from. Keep your ears peeled for his explanation on the difference between disappointment and regret. Two weeks prior to recording this, Mark had undergone surgery to remove a very aggressive prostate cancer. He told me that he'd been crying every day trying to come to terms with it all and it was very apparent to me as soon as he got into my car that Although he's a big, strong bloke, everything had happened really quickly and he was still very much processing it all. He, he, uh, he had a lot to get off his chest. I felt honored that Mark was comfortable opening up to me whilst I took him to and from one of his first checkups after the surgery. Howdy. Hello, mate. How you doing? Good to see Good you, to mate. See Good to see you. Good to see you. You realize I'm a fat prick, I won't even fit in the car like this, don't you? The, the seat is all the way back. Oh, you'll, you'll I'm be telling fine. you. You'll be fine. It used to be easier to get in and out of a car, mate. You'll be fine. You'll be fit perfect. Good to meet you, mate. It's really good to meet you. Um, just before I do anything, where am I taking you? It's to... Um... It was like two weeks ago that I saw your post. Was it was two weeks or three two, weeks? Two, two weeks. Well, two weeks ago I, I've, I had the operation. So there's a couple of posts leading up to it and mm. a couple after it. But it was a matter of days from when you found out to when you had the operation? Mate, I, I, from when I found out to when I basically <clears throat> had everything done, it was three weeks. And now, that whole process can take three, six months, but I'm an impatient prick, right? Right. And I look at it this way, if, when there's a life and death situation staring you in the face, mm. I don't want an aggressive cancer in my body for one minute longer than it needs to be in there. You address it when you need to I had to, it. mate. I had no choice. I had no choice and I didn't sleep for I didn't sleep for nearly nearly three weeks while the whole thing played out prior to that commitment to the operation. Right. So I I didn't want to not sleep for three months to six months. It's not good for anyone. I weighed up heavily whether I put that post up last week of me crying, right? And and, and I thought about it because you know, it's one of those ma whole male things about should a grown man cry? Well, the, mm. the reality is I've cried every day for five weeks mm. about the whole scenario. So that to answer to your question, yes, the stress, it, 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 hit, it hits me and affects me like it hits every other individual sure. that's affected by something like this because, you know what, it's real. Sure. It's not that you've broken your arm or you, you've dislocated your knee or you've got a headache. We're talking cancer, mate. Right? You haven't done anything wrong. No so. one's done anything wrong, no. but uh, you know, it's the cards you get dealt, right? Mm. And 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 it just highlights. Doesn't matter who you are, tall, short, fat, skinny, black, white, whatever. It doesn't discriminate. Mm. And something has happened that's delivered this outcome for me. And I'm telling you, it turned my world upside down. And and I've been so sad and emotional mm. since the whole thing. Um, but I'm human. Mm. Just, I'm human. And you seem comfortable, like, sharing that. I'm real with everything I do in my life. What you see is what you get, mm. right? And my whole premise with that is if you like it, you like it. If you don't, I really don't give a flying fuck, to be honest. Yeah, I can right? tell. It is what it is. <laughs> so, so why should I not be real about one of the biggest issues in society, and that is mental health, especially mm. on the back of the whole social media side of shit? Mm. So I did that, and I was really comfortable with that, and I was really happy with the outcomes around awareness. And I sort of felt it was my obligation to do that. So this is no different. And that moment come for me, I walked into my normal coffee shop to have a coffee, and Frank, the guy that serves me there, says, How you doing, Mark? I burst into tears. I couldn't tell him I was good. Mm. I wasn't good, mate. Yeah, yeah. And so, so do I then go into my shell? I'm emotional about it because this is a big issue, mate, mm. right? Do I go into my shell and hide? 
do I get the courage up every time I go out somewhere to say, right, if someone asks me how I'm going, I've got to say good. No. No, I'm going to say how I feel, and mm. I've felt shit. Mm. It's the worst thing that can ever happen to you. But you know what? There's always some other prick worse off. And that's yeah. my whole outlook on this, and it's how, that's what will get me through it. Regardless of the journey, three, six, 12 months, two years, five years, 20 years, I don't know. Yeah. That's, that's my outlook, Darren. I feel like it's also one of those things that makes sense in your brain and like, like in your head, but it takes time for like, you know, your heart to, to like accept it and, 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 and feel that. Like when you tell people, I'm, I'm having a shit day, yep. how do they react? Uh, you know, I get so much support from people, right? Regardless whether it goes back to the whole mental health side of things. Because I've had a lot of time to deal with that, yeah. right? Yeah. And as I said in the documentary I did, without medication, I, I wouldn't be here. It's a, it's a fact, right? Mm. So park all that. It's your learnings that you can share. Mm. Um, but this recent episode, yeah, everyone is so supportive, sympathetic. Mind you, some prick the other day sent me a message and just said, hurry up and die, you... See you. Like, can you believe it? Wow. Can you believe it? Like, that's. The, hell. Can you fucking believe that? Hurry up and die, you. Like, and it wasn't a fake account. Like, it was this. This prick actually has an account, and from what I can see, has a family. Like, can you believe it? Heard people say that. So, like, you know, a, you know, my messages and the support from this latest challenge have been overwhelmingly so supportive and unbelievable and amazing. Yes. Right. Purely because. For, for, for a whole range of reasons for them it's a for some guys it's been a wake up call in terms of man I'm going to get checked then mm. Darren I would I, I don't know how many people have gone and got checked now as a result of it but that's an amazing outcome as absolutely. far as I'm concerned absolutely if the legacy I leave and I, I want to be around for t- another 20 or 30 years there's my challenge right but if the legacy I leave when I'm eventually gone mm. right at some point is that I have actually helped make someone's day better than it started mm. purely through laughter mm. which is the best medicine i'm happy with that your parenting style is different to my parent my parents yeah. parenting yep. style no and, doubt. I, and i and i i you know it's like always like the grass is always greener yep so in my family a lot of the time uh things are made out to be better than they actually are and and i'm 27 years old yep. now and I've learned of late that that can be a good thing at times. Yes, yeah. it, it can be very helpful to like always glass half full. But sometimes you do have to address and be like extremely one hundred percent, one hundred percent authentic around the situation that it is. And that is at least from what like from an outsider looking yeah, at what it seems yeah. like is very. Oh look, you know, family. look at the end of the day, um, you know, people know pretty much the internet and outs of our assholes. <laughs> In all honesty. No, 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 they do, right? But, okay. but, but, but at the same time, there is still things in our family yep. that are that are really private, right? Yep. Because, you know, it's that whole, um, you've got to keep some things to yourself. Mm-hmm. Just because you should. And, and, and for, for normally driven by what the actual issue is. And our family is a normal family, yep. right? We are the same as every family out there. We love, we hate we kiss, we cuddle, we abuse, whatever, right? Mm. But you know, one thing we, one thing that's consistent uh, as part of all of it, at the end of it, we've got each other's back. Mm. It's as simple as that. Mitchell and Dylan fight, Hannah and I fight, you know, I, I, the kids abuse me for being too, um, you know, opinionated on shit, whatever, but that's how you learn. Absolutely. That's how you learn. And, you know, Mitchell will ask me something, I'll tell him, he'll do the opposite, well, don't fucking ask me then. <laughs> But he still asks me. He still asks me. And it's a pleasure to watch. <laughs> he still asks me. No, no, that's, no, that's that's awesome. Do you know? Do you know I've met Hannah before? Yeah, she no, told me. You, you, you picked her up one night. Like, like no, as, I watched, a, as I watched, an Uber I watched, driver. Yeah, I know. Like, there was no, there was nothing planned. I know. About she it. told yeah, me. Yeah, she yeah, told yeah. me. Yeah, we, would, we watch your videos and we have a laugh and all that sort of shit. And Hannah goes, "He's picked me up one day, Dad. One night, one night, Dad." I said, well, we'll have to be after fucking 2 o'clock in the morning. I'm tipping for Jews. <laughs> it was 3 o'clock. The was it 3? Yeah, yeah. Uh, she told me too. God, see, she's always late. <laughs> see how kids lie to you? <laughs> the surgeon is really optimistic that the cancer was um, contained within the prostate and mm-hmm. he's got it all out, okay. right? We won't know all of those answers and, and, until another month or two and three and four and five because of 
the microscopic sort of stuff that could be left that could flare. Yes. So I got in parallel. I, I got to deal with that, and I'll, I'll, I'll we'll deal with that. So where I'm taking you now? Yep. This is uh, a physio. Yeah, physio. So so recovery after prostate mm. is really what's critical about it is. Again, in, in very simplistic terms, it's about your pelvic floor, okay. learning how to control your bladder and and um, you know incontinence issues and all that. I've been again, for, uh, only four days ago. Uh, that's what I mean, yeah, four days ago, the catheter come out, right. and I'm really happy. Yeah. I, I sort of feel ninety percent normal, if not ninety five percent normal. Right. Um, you know, you've got the other side of things that you know is the old. Um, can you continue to you know get, you know get, basically have sex yeah. well doesn't even cross my mind at the moment and, and it's too early right and this is why men don't talk about this shit you realise yeah even even like for a split second there we like started to speak a little bit softer That's yeah just what happened. hey mate I'm sitting here with a pad on <laughs> okay. you know okay it's, it's this thick <laughs> No, but no, no, no. I'm but sorry, it, I shouldn't it, be laughing. No, it doesn't matter. It's <laughs> no, no, real. I exactly. don't. You know, it is what it is. Like, yes. I'd rather that than have piss stains in the front of me tracky. Me too. That's why I'm going to the physio. They'll say, "Well done, good job, keep doing this, whatever." It's, it's it, mate, the alternative is you're dead, Darren. Yes. Right. Yes. So I'm happy to wear a, a thin pad. It might be for three weeks. It could be for six months. I don't give a, I don't give a shit. Mm. I actually don't care. It doesn't yeah. worry me one bit. And then, you know, we'll have the challenges <clears throat> about. Dealing with you know the other part of manhood, and that'll just evolve over time. And I've talked to people from worst case scenario to best case scenario, mm -hmm. from forty-seven year olds to seventy-five year olds, and some people, one person especially, basically his life's over as far as sex is concerned. Mm -hmm. I've talked to seventy-one year olds that are back ninety percent normal. Mm. So somewhere in those two spectrums is where I'll land. You know what? I'm fifty-three. It's the least of my worries. It is, you know, I want to continue to enjoy my life because I've got a hot missus, but, you know, at the end of the day, just because you've got a Ferrari doesn't mean you're allowed to drive every day. <laughs> you've got to park in your garage well for a while. <laughs> well said. Um, wait, it's but, 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 It's just, yeah, yeah. But, but Darren, to your point, yes. this is why men don't talk about it because it's about, it's about that area. Well, who gives a fuck? It's an illness and it's, it's something that, you can lose your life from. So, wh where's your fucking priorities? On a on a personal level, um, like so for me, what's cool, just hearing you talk and hearing you talk about that kind of stuff and, and very personal stuff as well, is that. Um, so, like for me personally, like I took two months off because I, I worked four years, I burnt myself out, yep. and there was a lot of like rebuilding my my almost like self-esteem because I hadn't really addressed Darren Levy for four yeah. years yep. and I kind of forgot a bit about what, what Darren was, was All about. about. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so there's like a process building, rebuilding from like foundation up and a big thing was this like zero fucks mentality you and, have... and not caring because th that existed at some stage probably like f yeah four or five years ago much stronger than it does now but like I see it on your end and you're like like next level zero fucks. I've been it's, like it my whole life. What you see is what you get, mm. right? If you don't like it, I don't care. Mm. If you like it, fantastic. I, I, I like everyone until they give me a reason not to like them. Yeah. But if they give me a reason not to like them, and I'm not just saying I'm special, this is just how I operate. Mm. If they give me a reason not to like them, I won't fucking like them. Mm. And they'll never see me again. Regard and there's been some examples of that with associates, friends, people, they're certainly not fucking friends anymore, mm. In over the last year, five years, whatever, I wipe those bricks. Mm. If they don't add value to your life, and not, not in material things, but value more so in terms of, you know... Um, Support you. In terms of the basics to do with what a genuine friendship is about, well then fuck them off. 100%. They're not good for you. 100%. You don't need them. You actually don't. Sharon, my, I'll never forget also my, my, my Sharon's dad, when I first met him early in, in the whole thing, he said to me, this one night having a drink, and I was 19, he said, I can tell you now, you will go through life, and at the end of it, you will have, you can count your genuine friends on one hand. Mm. It's fucking true. Mm. And he said, they'll either try and bang your missus, drink all your piss, you know, spend all your money or they'll be trying to fucking shaft you in some way, shape or form. Mm. Might be a little bit harsh, but it's pretty fucking spot on. Really? 
It's pretty spot on. It is. I mean, like, I know, like, coming out of school, 18, big friendship. Are you good, you? That would be Dylan. Let's see what she's... Dylan, you're on Smile, you're on Candid Camera. I'm just here with Darren Levy. Hey, mate. You know Darren Levy that does the Uber videos? Hey, mate. And you're being filmed. So oh, say something what? fucking nice to me. <laughs> huh? Say something fucking nice to me. You know what I like about you? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> oh, boom. <laughs> How witty are you, though? That's so good. Yeah, that's There's good. always something. Yeah, There's mate, you know what? Do you know what, the, do you know what I like <laughs> about my kids, right? Oh, <laughs> fuck, he clearly wanted to tell me right, something. He needs to talk to you. Yeah, sorry, Darren Push hang, he hung up sorry, on Sorry, man. Hey, Darren, sorry, mate. Quick question for you. Yeah. Oh, he's about to hang up. There you oh, go. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he thinks he's a fucking comedian. Goes. I heard this in a, in a podcast the other day that apparently when you have kids, something or someone becomes more important than yourself. Yes. And that's like a big deal. 100%. Yeah. You know, 100 Hey, you know what? I, I'd rather be dealing with um, with what I'm dealing with than, than have my kids ring me and tell me something terrible about my grandkids. And, and sadly... <clears throat> You can't influence that, right? In, in in most cases, you can't. That's just life. There's an old saying too that I I, I live by, and that is, you can complain because you had no shoes mm. until you met a man with no feet. There is always mm. someone out there mm. way worse off than you, right? So you know, get your head out of the sand, stop feeling sorry for yourself, and just deal with it. And you you can have your down times because I've had more of them in the last five weeks than I've had in the last fifteen years. <clears throat> you got to pick yourself up. So on that, that's one of the things I wanted to ask you. It's probably like the main thing I wanted to ask you, because you've had several down periods in your life where you gotta like pick yourself up, and you have every single time. Um, if there was like one actionable thing for um, someone to do, like a like a thing that somebody somebody could do today, do you have any like? Yeah, and, well, anything that's to do with a regret, right? Okay. So if you can change something today that you know. If you weren't here tomorrow, you mm. would have regretted do it. I got my mind around mental health through three, you can call it two words or three words, and it's about disappointment and understanding the difference between disappointment versus regret. Right? Okay. Disappointment <clears throat> we will all have, and it's more often than not, it's not something that you can control, right? Okay. Regret you can control. Because okay. you, you actually had the ability to do something or make a decision that can actually wipe having that regret. Okay. And living, and understanding the difference between the two and living with disappointment versus living with regret is very, very different. Mm. You know, you, you can accept living with disappointment, living with regret. It, I think it just burns you inside way, way more. Okay. Disappointment and regret. Well, I look at my and footy career, right? At the end of the day, I left home at 16 to come down here mm. and I was going to play 300 games for Collingwood and be a, a star. That was my mindset, mm. right? So I was really driven. That's what I wanted to do. Played seven games. I had more operations than, than games that I played. Mm. And I couldn't deal with that for so long. That was my whole underlying mental health issue, right? Mm. But slowly, with the help of medication and just sitting down talking to experts and the like, you know, I got to understand that, you know, I was fortunate even getting there, playing a few games, and I, I actually have not one regret about that whole seven years I spent there. I've got huge disappointment mm. because the cards didn't fall my way injury-wise. It's that I've got no regrets. Mm. And when I, had try, when I actually eventually got to understand all that, it made it so much easier to accept. I guess what you're doing is you're taking the the, the power away from something that you couldn't control. You can't and, control and, and it. splitting that up into, yeah, yeah it's, it's disappointment, but it's not something that you did. No, it's, I did nothing. It's, it's I did a, nothing. It's yeah. the cards I was dealt, yes. right? So it is yeah. what it is. I tried. I mm. tried and more operation, this and the other, but it is. Whereas if I, if I had a fight with Dylan, mm. right, or any, anyone that I actually respected and I didn't mend... The, the 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 issue whatever it is whatever or tell your kids that you loved them and you drop dead tomorrow or it, it or it, it actually resulted in you know you having a massive family issue that's regrettable yes because you can change that yes you can actually say okay that shouldn't have happened let's put it aside i'm sorry 
and then that burn in your guts goes with it. Gun, it yeah. goes with it's it, right? Gun. So why do you need to carry it? You got to weigh up. Is it is it something that you want to mend or whatever? When you're talking about relationships, this and the other. But mm. and if you don't find right, then you move on. But where it's something that will churn and burn that actually constitutes regret, fix it. Don't have it because it doesn't help anyone. So watching your documentary. I didn't realize like the the level or the unfortunate series of events, um, but still to this day at fifty three, I found 50, it on my fifty third birthday that I had prostate cancer. What still, a great fucking present that was! <laughs> but still to this day, like you are very strong. You are like mentally very strong. You know, I think I, I if I was to self assess that, mm. I would say that I've come a long way. But what I'm not afraid to do is show my emotion. Mm. I'm just not because at the end of the day, again, I think I said it before, I've lived my life being real and what you see is what you get. Mm. So if I'm sad, unhappy, stressed, whatever, I'm not going to hide it. Mm. It doesn't do you any good hiding it. And, you know, again, I have, I've never cried so much in my life. And I know Hannah's been frightened by it. The last, since especially since Mum was sick as well, and, and it really shakes her seeing her dad cry. Sure. But I'm not going to go in the bedroom and cry because you've got to give your kids a dose of reality, yep. right? Yep. And 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 I think what it also is is what it does is it reminds everyone that you don't know whether it's your parents, your your family, your friends, or or someone in the street. You don't know what they're actually going through, mm-hmm. right there and now. So just be fucking nice and be kind mm. because it might be that tipping point that someone didn't need. And on the flip side, just you being nice and saying hello, supportive, giving them the call, fucking shouting them a coffee. Yeah. That might just make them have a whole new outlook on fucking life and it costs nothing. Absolutely. It costs nothing, mate. Wouldn't you just Feeling. love for everyone to have that mindset that it doesn't cost to be kind? Yeah. To, I, I, think, to be nice. I think people, it's almost like if you want to get buff do a lot of push-ups a lot of people know that they should be kind but i you know in the same way that the guy who who dm'd you that hateful shit the yeah. other day <laughs> yeah. like th- th- when people are hurt they um have this like victim mentality and they they think it's okay or that they owe it to the world and in a karmic way to like retaliate um which is fucked up but like you can get into that mind state even myself 18, 19 year old Darren coming out of school, miserable, didn't really know what I wanted to do next. <laughs> yeah. And this is not on the same with the same it gravity. Doesn't matter, as it. It's normal. But I started being a dickhead to some people that didn't deserve yeah. to yeah. didn't deserve it. Yeah. Um, and and it just like, you know, you wake up and you're having a shit day and you make somebody else's day yeah. shit. But there's no excuse to not make the next day less shit for no, yourself. I agree. And, and you know the difference is, right? In a maturity sense, right? Basically at some point your balls drop. Right, and you wake up to yourself and say, "Well, that's dumb. That that that, that, that sort of way, that behaviour is just stupid." Shit. I went through it after the footy. Is I would go out and I would never ever go out on a Saturday night without without being in a punch up. Mm. Stupid, dumb. If my kids do it, I almost disown them. But some of the shit I did. But eventually, you get out of it, right? And you you mature. Pretty much, it comes down to maturity, right? And so you've done that. Nineteen. Everyone makes mistakes, and you expect all that sort of shit. But it's it's when you get to that point where people should be and are mature enough that they know what they should and shouldn't do and what's right and what's wrong. And I'm sure, whether it was front of mind or back of mind at the time for you, there would have been this like disappointment, regret thing of like, if I keep doing this, I'm going to regret doing this. Well, well Sharon was going to leave me. Right. It's as simple as that. Right. right? Okay. Or, sadly, you know, because you, you know what can happen in fights and no one deliberately sets out to smash someone and have them fall over and hit their head and kill mm. kill themselves right mm. but we see it all too often yep. right that whole one punch thing with Danny Green and like and yeah you know, did I ever walk up and king hit anyone no but I would look for an altercation yep. where then I felt I had a justified reason yes. to actually fight someone stupid yeah. dumb yeah dumb because yeah. you never know who you fight anyway the prick you know I, I could have been the one knocked out and killed yeah so dumb but that was a really bad phase in my life really bad and I was 19 through to Eight kids at 25, so it was pretty much done and dusted by, you know, 23 ish, you know, three or four years that first thing. But that's three or four years too long. Random question, just before I let you go in, because yep. it's uh, it's almost quarter two. But what are your thoughts on 
when weed is legalized in Australia? Because it, it's going to happen eventually. Uh, you know, um, I'm really open-minded about it. And I, when I say that, it's because of the medicinal reasons mm. for weed, mm. um, I think is proven that mm. it works. So Living Newton-John is an absolute amazing example. And without even knowing all the details, other than high level, she said what she's done is, and, and, and her survival has been aided by mm. you know medicinal marijuana, etc. Right. Um, so I, I think... I think at the end of the day, given that where it's at and that's proven, uh, I think it should be it should be legalised, mm. right? And, it should be, and I've never, I think I had a few joints when I was bloody nineteen or whatever. But I've, I I don't smoke and I don't, you know, uh, weed and all that sort of shit. But even the CBD oil and all this shit with cancers and all that, yes. I'm heavily researching that now. So and if next time you get me, you know, I'm floating like this, you know, I've got to. <laughs> you better see. It. No, it, it actually like I mean I don't think it's fully legal here in Australia, but I've been also like trying to learn a bit about it. Can be prescribed now, for, I think. for anxiety. Yeah, it helps a lot yeah. of people that 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 deal. With with that kind of stuff so you know what people should get the treatment they need to give them some normality in life right mm. cancer sufferers get given chemo to try and give them some normality treat the illness this that and the other um because it it's, it's it works in most cases right mm. and it prolongs and, and it also allows people to get rid of it the yes. whole range across that spectrum but the same should apply to marijuana why should it be any different we know it's it's a drug but at the end of the day if the if the the medical benefits of it are there and they're proven and it's all sound why wouldn't you absolutely if we have the tools available to us let's use them that's it agreed let me go and see this video see what she's got to say alrighty she might even change me nappy for me you never know <laughs> let, <laughs> I don't know I shouldn't say nappy <laughs> I'll see you shortly I'll see you in a little bit Darren from Audio Production here Mark went into his checkup and then rejoined me about an hour later so that I could take him home hello mate I'm good how'd you go Oh, sorry I took so long. No, you're all good. I had to go back. You're all I left good. my dignity there. I had to go back and get it. Was it Was it fun? Man, I just felt like I gave birth to a kid. <laughs> what What is Just exactly, laying on the table. What exactly? Yeah. Naked. Yeah. With an ultrasound under your clacker. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> right, right. So right. this whole thing is, you know, like... Yeah, you leave your dignity at the door, mate. I'm telling you now. Let me put this belt on. Mate, my pelvic floor, he, she just told me. So not only am I a good-looking prick, I've got a really good pelvic floor. Well, congratulations. <laughs> that's a, that's a yeah, big deal. Isn't it funny how you celebrate different things at different phases in your life, right? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, everybody wants to have a strong pelvic floor. Oh, that's... mate, but you know, this is the thing. Absolutely. I, I, I reckon... Um, <laughs> I never heard of the bastard until this happened, mind you. But um, never heard of a pelvic floor. Yeah, no, no, I had. Right. I had because my wife's had three kids, of course. So right, right. I've heard all that. But um, I don't know. I've been blessed with a good one. She just told me. Congratulations! I'm very happy. For yeah, you. Oh, it's incredible. I, like, <laughs> I was waiting for a fucking gold necklace or a, you know a medal or something to come out. Well, it was a KFC or something like. Yeah, that. well, she did actually say to me, "No, but you need to start st continue to lose some weight." So there goes the KFC. No, the 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 weight thing can affect yeah, this. Yeah. No. Just overall health, right? Okay. The 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 better condition your body's in. You just, you will always heal better. Fair right? enough. Darren from Audio Production here again. Mark's been married for about 32 years and I wanted to know how that works because everyone's getting divorced these days. Our marriage is far from perfect, but we've invested so much time into it that why throw away shit? Regardless of whatever the issues are, right? Mm -hmm. And our marriage has had all the same fucking issues every marriage has had. Okay. But we've confronted all of them. So you all, you always address the elephant. Well, yeah. In the room. Well, well you, you can't kid yourself. Sure. Whatever's happened, happened regardless of whatever it is. You know, from from, you know, when you start courting to when you're fucking thirty two years down the track, and you know, um, horrible periods in our in our life of just arguing so bad and being the the really the worst role models you could be okay. for your kids, mm. where. You know, Sharon says, I'm not fucking putting up with this anymore. Mm. So you go, okay, righto, what is the issue? It's not all me. Well, yes, it is. No, it's you. And compromise, okay. right? When, again, we still fucking have them every day, but grass is always greener and, and you, you just got to work at shit. Simple as that. I think, um, I mean, like, that's, 
it's it's also very impressive because like it's so easy now. People walk away too easy, don't they? Right. Like, I mean, my parents walked away. I'm glad. I'm kind of glad they walked away. Yeah, of course. But know. like, there are instances when it's necessary. Yes. But then I think um, it can kind of. It's a pity in some yeah, instances. Yes, it is. I and you know, I think if you strongly believed that the outcome you wanted couldn't be achieved, walk away. Mm, right. Okay. Walk away. But nine, my view on it, from experience, is nine times out of ten, the outcomes are achievable. Okay. You just got to work at it. Yeah. It's like fucking anything. It doesn't just happen. It doesn't just come. You take, you're complacent. You take people for granted. You know, you 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 change in terms of you know all those different things, respect and all that. Well, just pull your fucking head in and, and just you know fix it. I've got an idea for a bit of a segment. Yes. Okay. Share with me. Um, it's only fitting that like if I am in the car with Angry Dad yep. that we talk about things that grind our gears yeah yep. yeah. you know you know, like the whole grinding your gears yeah, stuff, that, stuff that frustrates you really irritates you, you yep. there's one that I have yep. that really grinds my gears and it's swearing really? No. Jesus Christ I better, get, well, I'm, <laughs> I, I better get out no it's when people have an issue with swearing because I swear a yeah. lot and it's how I express myself yep. but some people really take offense to it and you yeah, swear a hell I, of a lot I do I do and you know in a lot of uh, in a lot of instances I'm actually not proud of it but but my, be right. mindful of this right yeah I've actually had a professional career all my life and the last five six years ish it's sort of stopped but I had a job for seven and a bit years um, working for a, an American company as their um, Australian managing director right okay I don't know how many staff we had, we had 30 staff 40 staff at one point whatever doesn't okay. matter okay so for seven years my boss was based in um, in the US a seventh day Adventist right so they they don't swear at all clearly right okay. you know in that whole seven years whether it was my weekly phone conversations with him or the times I met him <clears throat> here when he come out or I went over there yeah not once did I say bloody or shit or whatever this was out of professional yeah. um, respect and courtesy yeah. and the fact that you know you have your professional life and your personal life and but not not once in seven years did, would he have even heard me say shit i used to work in corporate sales i worked for three years for oh yeah 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 yep, yep. um and something i didn't realize until like i got into their little ecosystem was yeah they swear a lot and i was like this is fucking great <laughs> it's like it's, it's 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 something that i didn't expect in the corporate world cuz you know like your dad never swore or my dad never swore so it was like yeah such a you know i just assumed that that's what happens in the professional world but no it's very normal we're far from perfect our blueprint is very different to others um, and I think we have the right balance, but it, it, some people agree, some people won't, and I don't give a fuck anyway. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. So swearing doesn't really grind your gears for the most part. Nah, nah. Good, nah, good. Nah. Is there, anything, is there anything that grinds your gears in particular at the moment? That's something that's like on your mind and you're just like, fuck it. Yeah, you know what I can't stand is this whole trolling, bullying, fucking keyboard warrior mm. shit that happens to too many people. Mm. Um, too often and there is no fucking consequence mm. and I've said it for a long time and these platforms will never do it they won't listen and I talked to Byron about this you know Byron that was on Fifi Fev and he's a good oh, fella yeah, good yeah, fella yeah. Byron yes. the reality is too many people can hide behind a fucking avatar on a um, on a social media platform and feel they can abuse people yeah. and these platforms aren't accountable and there's no consequence for the individuals you, you t- to, to have the privilege of being on these fucking sites, people should need to do a 100-point check or whatever it is. It's something as simple as that because um, you're then identifiable. The police have now recognised the whole bullying, stalking and all that, and there's some decent consequences for stalking, blah, 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 physically. But fucking um, electronically, the same should fucking apply. 100%. But they, they won't because for them it's another account or active account or whatever they want to do it. And it's fucking wrong. And the only way these weak individual pricks that hide behind a keyboard board will ever be accountable or stop it is if we start to do something like that. That is... Actually, I wonder if maybe I did hear the suggestion from you first. It will I, have been. I, I, it, it will have been. It was it, like a know, year ago or yeah, something. Yeah, it'd be. Yeah, 100%. Something like that. And I was like, that makes so much sense. Because, look, I think... Um, even Uber, for example, 
Uber or any of these gig economy companies, so Uber, any social media platform where they have a set of terms of service, you abide by the terms of service, but they don't actually have... Enforce it. They don't... Well, they don't have the support teams to... Because it's so huge. They don't, they don't invest any money into the support teams to, like, deal with these support tickets. No, you know why, though? Because that's viewed as a cost, right? Exactly. It's not an investment. It doesn't have an ROI attached to it. Exactly right. It's and, fucking and, commercial, dr- but, driven. But there's no regulation around it as well. They don't have to, so they won't. But if, oh, if, um, if they had something like a 100-point check or something, yeah, to keep people accountable, that is exactly Do you know how simple needed. it would be to do it's it? so straightforward. It's fucking straightforward. And so you know what? Maybe some prick needs to invent a platform for... For, for users' peace of mind and to feel safe and, and bully-free, so to speak, someone should create a platform that it's mandatory for that to be the case to actually participate in it. I don't know. Yeah. I, I'm not fucking doing it. <laughs> Mate, I really appreciate you giving, you, giving Mate, me your time. Mate, thank you so much day. for taking me to uh, my appointment. I feel like I've been spoiled. <laughs> um, chauffeur-driven, but got to actually have a chat and to meet you because I watch all your shit on... YouTube and Instagram, so Thank it's good know. to put a face to the the name and the voice now. Likewise, and I appreciate it. Likewise, can we? Uh, yes, well, I'll shake your hand. Can we do a selfie? One hundred percent. I was going to do that. On. Actually, well, let's get a selfie, and then I what I want to do. I want to come up to the car and film. Sure. Wow, you know that can be. Yeah, you're getting in a Mazda too today. <laughs> <That's perfect. laughs> Thanks, Thank mate. You. So nice to meet Cheers, you. Cheers, buddy. Thank. Keep in touch, man. I will. Keep in and, touch, and I'll let you know when it's up and no, everything. Well, yeah, let me know, and then we'll get we'll get everyone to share it around for you. For sure, and and best of luck with everything going on, man. Thanks, uh, bro. I, I appreciate it, man. It was great chatting. Keep, keep in touch. See you, mate. Thanks, Darren. Bye. Once again, thank you, Mark, for sharing your situation so openly with me and the viewers. Fortunately, since recording this podcast, Mark's first blood test after the prostate removal has returned a zero PSA reading. Now, if you're enjoying the podcast or have any type of constructive feedback for me, please let me know. Subscribe on any platform that you're listening or viewing on, and I'll see you on Friday.